subject or the matter that Jesus Christ is Lord, so the Lordship of Jesus, the rule, the authority, the reign, I acknowledge every one of you and the pastors in the house. Acts chapter 2 verse 38 is what we've been reading, that therefore let all Israel, let uh, 236, let the whole house of Israel know assuredly that this same Jesus whom you crucified, God has made this, uh, this Jesus whom you crucified two things, both the Lord and what? And Christ. So we pursuing this matter of Lordship. And we have said Lordship, Lord is the whole aspect of rulership, dominion, power, and having influence over systems, authorities, kingdoms, and so forth. We need to find how to apply this. And yesterday I said, if we can submit to him as Lord, all other things will align themselves in our lives, whether financial, relationship, even spiritually. Yesterday I said Jesus is Lord in the heavens. So when it comes to principalities, powers, uh, rulers of this darkness and spiritual wickednesses in heavenly places, those should not intimidate you. Why? Because they were created by Christ. And though Satan fell, he did not gain more power by falling. So what man needs to do is to come back to our spiritual position will be able to deal with these principalities and forces. Are you listening to me? The first time I went to Switzerland to minister, the first night I had a dream. And I saw a huge ice field, white, ready. White is a little brownish, ready for harvest. And I was walking through that huge field then I met four major big lions. So I knew that as I walk through this harvest field, there are four dangerous lions that I have to face. But that encountered before Salimian and Azo. You understand? So, but I knew there are four principalities in that nation that we needed to deal with. One of them I discovered was the spirit of Jezebel. I went to one of the shopping malls, what we call, you know, the malls and there's a supermarket and whatever. Right at the door, a few steps, there was a huge table where everybody walking in was lighting a candle. Lighting a candle, then you go do shopping. I knew this is an altar. Uh, I, I could not light a candle myself because at Aida Wimbo to Liskia University, light a candle, you know, light the world. You can't light the world with a candle. You need kilowatts, kilowatts. You need KV to light a candle. Anyway, the point is, I could not bow to their gods. But I shopped. So, it doesn't matter the size of principalities, powers. Ephesians 6 12, because Jesus is Lord in the heavens, is Lord on the earth, is Lord on under the earth. That's what he said yesterday. So in Ephesians 6.12, the four major classifications or powers, the infrastructure of the enemy, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against what? Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual hosts of weakness. Wickedness. These, in the heavens, Jesus is Lord there. One of the great prophets in our networks in the world said that even a young believer, if you are washed by the blood of Christ and you know that you are born again, 
and they are walking in righteousness of Christ. Even the strongest principality won't take you anywhere. Because we have the helmet of salvation on our head. We are covered from the top. We are not fighting to victory. We are fighting from victory. We are already victorious. We are already, we are just restating, declaring again what Jesus has done. We are the agents of Christ coming to bring the Lordship of Christ wherever we go. It's already done. So, Ejalishi Kama Shetana Naitwa, witchcraft. What are the names you are scared about? Dragon, Satan, Kabwere, Ufa. Generation in Dogo, Hawajiwi Kabwere, Uga Muchai, Mukubwa, Mumbasa Road. You know, uh, and they are grad children. It doesn't matter. In the spirit, Jesus is Lord. Of course, on the earth, and even under the earth. Now, let me say three or four things. First, on this matter of lordship, that we know that Jesus is savior, but that he is also lord. And we all think Jesus is savior, and we thank God for that salvation. And we know the benefits of salvation, and all that that's great. And you know, savior, Jesus as savior has to do with the priesthood role, or the priestly role of Jesus in intercession, in being mediator, and so forth, through his blood and the sacrifice he presented before heaven in the heavenly sanctuary. But secondly, in that same matter, Lord is literally speaking about the kingly role of Jesus. Because he rules, he has dominion, he has a reign. His kingly role. Now, the second important thing, not only that he is Lord, but that the Lordship of Christ is expressed in the kingdom of God. We need to appreciate matters, kingdom of God. Now, kingdom of God, we know that in the evangelical uh, foundation is that Jesus is a soon coming king. Have you ever heard that phrase? Jesus the soon coming king. It needs a little bit of adjustment because then it says if he is the soon coming king, that means there's another king here and he's not king now. But we want you to know the kingdom of God has two aspects. The kingdom is coming, but the kingdom is also here. Are we together? And as a believer, you need to know that you have the authority of the kingdom with you. You need to have a princess mentality, mentality of a prince. I rule for God on the earth. Are we together? This we have to keep saying it and saying it because churchianity and church politics has overshadowed kingdom mentality and the matter of the king. Are we together? And rulership and reigning. Unaona uko parliament, lazima tutaje mana is a current matter. Sinio, there is some rulership. You know, seats can move. People can, authority, kuna authorities. Sinaza kuondoa biti ya panapale. Sinaza, that's how we should be operating the spirit. Yeah, we can block that, we can block that. We can tell them that one come, we can tell this one go. In the spirit. That's how you should be ruling demons. You just have one weekend of prayer and it's your parliament. Now, we are going to be able to weekend And we take over. That is not work of reverence and pastors and bishops and church leaders. It's the work of every saint. But saints must know we are kings on the earth. We have that role. So the lordship of Jesus is manifested, demonstrated through the kingly role of the saints. Are we together? 
So we are not going to wait until Jesus comes for us to experience the benefits of the kingdom. Now, the kingdom of God, therefore, must be expressed in our lives and through our lives. That's how lordship is going to be. In the prayer that Jesus gave us, very basic, Matthew chapter 6 verse 10, it says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Where is God's will going to be done? According to that verse. On earth. Somebody say on earth as it is in heaven. So where I am, I have to make sure my environment, my atmosphere should look like a heaven. Heaven, the peace of God. Heaven is very peaceful. Huh? There are no riots in heaven. The last time the devil tried to riot, Revelation 7, I mean 12, 7, he was removed from there. He was defeated and chased from heaven. And heaven still has great tranquility and peace and rest and joy. I hear the people who visit heaven, oh, the joy there is amazing. They even have never come back. I'm telling you, heaven is something else. Which means what? Though there is sorrow, pain, darkness, here and so much trouble, we can have a preview, we can taste of the heavenly stuff. And I pray for you that you will taste while you are here, you will taste the heaven. You will taste the joy. The Bible, Peter says, is joy unspeakable. You cannot express it in words. Uh, Hebrews talks about tasting of the heavenly gift. If you have tasted of the heavenly gift and the wonders thereof. Let me read that for us in Hebrews chapter 6 and hear how uh, when he's talking about don't backslide and don't go back, uh, don't be of those who go back, he says uh, in this chapter 6 verse Verse 4, that it is impossible for those who are once enlightened and have tasted what? The heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit. That experience is very, very powerful. It's very impossible for those who have tasted this heavenly gift. In the psalm he says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Because Jesus is Lord and reigning and ruling in our lives. We should experience a heaven down here. The rule and authority, authority of God. Praise the name of Jesus. So the kingdom is not only is that something we, which is coming. It's also currently advancing on earth. And someone must lay hold of it. Or must be involved in the advancing kingdom. The kingdom of the rule of God is expanding. The Bible says that his glory, according to uh, the prophets in the old, uh, I think Haggai 2.14 uh, talked about a prophetic word. Let's check what is there. Haggai chapter 2. Uh, I don't know whether it's Haggai 2.14. About the glory of the Lord. Feeling... Uh, All right, let me get the verse for you. The book of Haggai, that the glory of the Lord is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. It's a promise given by the scripture, by, by the Lord himself. Glory to God. Anyway, just believe the preacher. Somebody said the glory of the Lord shall fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. Just look for the verse, as it were. The kingdom of God is advancing. Now, so the lordship of Jesus and the kingdom is that as the kingdom is moving forward, Jesus is becoming Lord wherever that kingdom is taken and is preached and proclaimed. Because the scripture says the kingdom of God in Matthew is within you. So whatever somebody receives Jesus, he has received the king. We're together. Now, all of you guys who are here, if Jesus is Lord and you're born again, that means you have the king and the kingdom, the
the rule of God, the authority of God, the supremacy of God within you. So if you share and tell the world about that Jesus, you are advancing the kingdom. That's why here on Elevate TV, we are advancing kingdom lifestyle through our broadcasting, our programs, and so forth. Blessed be the name of Jesus. And so, let's advance the kingdom. Tell your neighbor, let's advance the kingdom. So it was not Haggai, it was a cook. All right, it was a cook, Habakkuk, Habakkuk. For the other will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. How does the water cover the sea? Everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, the waters in the sea, there's no drop unless it's an island. Waters bumper to bumper. So the glory of the knowledge of God is coming everywhere. This man, this man, this woman, this woman, this man, this woman, everywhere. This child, this person, the glory of the knowledge of the Lord. That's why those who know the Lord and are knowing the Lord must share, must advance the kingdom. That's why 2 Peter 3.18 says this. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. It says that but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So two aspects. Not only the aspect of Savior but also the aspect of Lord. Grow in the knowledge of our Lord. And matters the Lordship must grow, not only in the grace, but also in the knowledge. <coughs> Excuse me. Somebody say, I'm advancing the kingdom. According to Matthew 11, verse 12, anytime you consider the advancement of the kingdom, there is an aspect which is necessary for believers and for us to know. The violent, forceful nature of the kingdom. Read this in the Amplified Version. The Bible says in the Amplified Version. From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven, suffers violent assault. And the violent man seizes it by force as a precious price. In other words, the kind of spiritual violence necessary is much because... When you talk of the kingdom of God, the authority of Christ, the supremacy of Christ, the levels of resistance are too much. The levels of resistance are too much. Uh, I'm tempted to keep commenting on what's going on. I think I can tell you something. For the first time in this nation, we've heard prayers Shall I say a prayer altar, places of prayer established in the highest offices. Brother, would you reduce the throws? Because that is blasting unnecessarily. So, prayers and altars, you know, like a little church, you can gather several people and just do worship and pray and pray for the nation. You are aware of that? Would that be necessary? Kenya? Would it be necessary to have a prayer water in the altar in the Minister of Finance, for instance? The brethren in the Minister of Finance can go to one of the floors. They have a room. They can pray for 30 minutes and go to work. If they do that every week and they are praying for the economy, for their ministry, things would happen, right? Is that necessary? How about if they can pray in state house? Would that be necessary? How about in Karen? Would, would that be necessary? Those altars are being shut now. Unless God intervenes in Kenya, in the process of our politicking, seller, think about it. I had a parliamentarian rebuke a service at the DP's office, a service. Yani speaking words against a service, a politician. So the agenda is clear. I was praying and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. The altars are the ones that must be shut. So watch at one nani at the replace. Kama itafanyika. Tuwana kama kutakuwa na maumbi. 
Uniambie Kenya yenu itaenda wapi? But anyway, don't worry, we shall pray in the house. We shall pray in the house. Somebody say we can pray in the house. We shall pray in the house. But when God begins to fight for himself, because atafanya hivyo. God anapeleka watu 90 days. Mnafanya drama yenu, mnafanya drama yenu, alafu sasa anateremsha kidole. Kenya mtaimba. Lakini hatuta kubali. Tuko hapa prophesy na kudeclare Kenya shall still survive. Blessed be the name of Jesus. So the kingdom of God sovereigns violent assault. So if you are not violent, forget about the kingdom. If you are coward, you can't even go to the promised land. You die in the wilderness. Ukiona tu ready see, ai utarudi kwa zile watermelons za Peru. Ukiona Jordan is flooded. I like the way they cross the Jordan. They crossed it when it was flooded. That's the best time to see the kingdom and to see the power of God. God split the Red Sea. They walked on dry ground. He helped the children of Israel to cross the Jordan when it was flooded. Glory to God. The kingdom requires a level of violence. Every time you see resistance, that's the best time to lift your faith. That's the best time to pray, shout, take your stand and believe God to advance. There must be a level of fervency, a level of power, a level of grace. Uh-huh. Christianity is not docile like a dove. The dove aspect of, a, of the Holy Spirit is not all there is. There is also fire. And fire is always on the move. Anytime you light a fire, fire is not stagnant. Fire is burning something. It's moving. It's consuming something. It's pushing something. It's changing the nature of that wood is changing something glory to god it's cooking something fire if it's huge like a forest it will trouble california oh my god fire of the holy spirit are we together so for the kingdom of god to advance there's a level of violence taking it by force and our force is faith confession prayer the blood of christ are you listening to me those things we do as spiritual disciplines they are part of the force including preaching the gospel that's how jesus is being lord of our nation are we together we have said this before that nations families and institutions not institutions but nations tribes families and countries that have allowed a constant preaching of the gospel the last 100 years they have changed those nations are better they are better economically they are better in their educational institutions they are better in their family values they are better in their even development the gospel is changing nations look at kenya in the 50s and look at kenya in the 20s it's part of the mission and work part of the alliance high school and all the other missionary schools, the missionary hospitals. Are you listening? The systems that was established. I like when the British, although there are problems, wherever they built something, they built a chapel. Most of those schools have chapels. Go to Lenana, go to Nairobi school, go where? They have real churches. When brethren here are trying to find ways to build a church, Kwaizo Shule, aye, real chapel, real with a cross. When the Canadians built the technical schools in Kenya, they never put any chapel because of their influence, which was so liberal, so they didn't have anything to do with the prayer. I went to such two technical schools. Even getting a place to pray, my friend, was a challenge. While people in Nairobi school, they have a place they can pray, a chapel, with a whole chaplain. Wherever the gospel of entered a nation, nations grow, nations advance. Are we together? Let me ask you, how many of you went to a good school where you are singing hymns, either on Monday or Friday during the assembly? You are singing hymns. What a friend we have in Jesus. All right, the ones who went to can do to Harambe. Was there, was there an assembly? <laughs> I mean, I, I, I remember those hymns. Whether you are saved or not as a student in uniform and you have done the assembly and parade looking beautiful those 15 few minutes one boy or girl will lead the hymn or one of the teachers 
and the whole beautiful voices of a thousand or five hundred, eight hundred students are singing, what a friend we have in Jesus. And it's not a church, it's not a ministry, it's not a cathedral. It's a nation that allow the value of prayer and worship. Are we together? And those guys, even when they become senior in government and they have a ceremony, they will ask for a hymn because of foundations. Are we together? Very interesting incidents this morning. I went for a senior leader's breakfast meeting in a certain hotel I not mentioned. So when I went, uh, I was a little late because of several because's, but then I discovered I wasn't late because I think there was a confusion in the hotel that the, the, the people who had booked had a certain name. There was another national cooperative movement and the leader who booked was the same name. But one was a bishop, the other one was not a bishop. So now when we went, we found that the breakfast for the bishops and the location was taken over by the cooperative. So there was no place for the, for the bishops neither location. And we were there wondering. So when 18, I found young people. I said, no, no. The age of the people in the meeting I'm going is not this age. I don't know what to In fact, one of the girls rushed and said, oh, Apostle Juman, glad to see you. One time you preached to us where, you know, she, she almost wanted to take a picture. I said, no, no, God bless you. Thank you very much. You received the gospel. But now the story is this. One of the bishops who had come earlier, when he, he was lost and looking for the place, they discovered who he is, they say, please uh, pray for our meeting, even before we start. So, now he joined another meeting and began to pray for them, and he shared breakfast as he waited for the other meeting to be organized. I like Kenya. I like Kenya. What's the point? People still value prayer. Still people have a level of godliness. Wakiona man of God, zema tafadhali fanya nini? Tuombe. Glory to God. That's how the kingdom of God is advancing. How many of you do want to be invited to pray in such a place or whatever? You need to obey. Glory to God. So when you pray, if it's me praying in such a place, you know how I will pray? I'll put a few verses in the prayer. Let's all pray. Lord, Father, thank you. Like you say to the Philippians, rejoice. And again I say rejoice in Philippians 4.4 4, in prayer. So you are reading scripture for them, but you are also praying for them. One time, I gave a speech to one of the institutions, and uh, it was on Zoom. I think 40 counties, all their county leaders were there. So I was speaking to them on planning. They asked me to talk to them about planning. Because anyway, I think Jiri to my sin, to my plan, and it has worked. <laughs> and it has produced results. So, and because it was a not a religious institution, so I was not using Christianese. The hallelujah, glory. No, 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 no. You know, I was speaking technically like somebody who has gone to school. Are we together? So I gave them, I quoted books of serious people. I had a paper and I was taking them through the paper and it was wonderful. But because I'm not foolish, I told them there are some words of wisdom that any planner, any group of teams of people, if they can use these words of wisdom, these kind of words, about five of them, these can change how things will go in the, you know, in your environment, in your relational environment. <sighs> then I began to put the statements in the book of Psalms. And then I told them, it's in one of the greatest manuals that most leaders in the world consult. They really want to know which is that manual. Hey. It is called the book of Psalms, the words of Solomon in the Bible. And then without breathing and allowing them to think for three minutes, I released five major verses. And then I concluded. Uh, they began now to clap online and everything and I was done. Then they began writing. Can you ask the man of God to give us those verses? Everyone was asking for verses from every county. And they forgot it was not a Christian meeting, but they were asking for the verses. Because wisdom is the principal thing. Amen. Are we together? This is how the kingdom of God is advancing. Let me tell you a story. As you can in a career happen, I think happened because you know in the 90s we had a philosophy. It was funny in our own chain. To go to the sema akuna kumwaga, sema akuna kumwaga. 
this was it maji akimwagika haizoleki when water pours you can gather it all right meaning we don't mwaga meaning we don't lose an opportunity if a chance an opportunity comes to go for a mission or to preach we could not let it go even if you are not available you say i'm coming but you are sending somebody who can equally deliver we never lost any meeting anywhere because of our philosophy hakuna nini hakuna kumwaga and any opportunity we had we had to do a good job and people got saved in birthdays funerals can you imagine making an altar call in a funeral doing an altar call in weddings eh biarusi amen tulia hivi anasikia mbila kisamani somebody else lift your hand in a wedding because we believed any opportunity where people are gathered they must hear the gospel I pray for you this December you can gather your cousins your relatives your brothers your sisters call for a man of God you know gather them tell them this year is a year of the Lord 2024 you have a very special message for them then gather somebody let them hear the gospel some of those nemakoyas in your family who have never gone to church they will hear something that may change their lives This is how the kingdom must move forward Glory to God Jesus is Lord let him be Lord everywhere. So Colossians 1:13 and 14 let me just read two three scriptures and we'll let you go. Colossians 1:13 on salvation says that we have been delivered for he has which version is that go back to the other version he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of his son of his love somebody say his kingdom so we've been delivered from darkness from sin the spirit of sin and death we've been delivered from the world we've been brought into the kingdom so let it be so clear in your spirit that we are not just in church we are in the kingdom are we together we are not just in church we are in the kingdom of god in the rule the reign the dominion the domain of god that's where we are and then the bible says in the next verse that in him in whom we have been we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins so thank god for forgiveness thank god for redemption we have been bought with a high price and we have been rescued from the dominion of darkness and we have been brought into the kingdom of his son he loves now it's very important therefore to discover as we advance the message that jesus christ is lord Let's bring in the aspect of being citizens of heaven and ambassadors of the kingdom of God. Now, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 20 uh, very quickly it says of how we are ambassadors for Christ. First 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God was pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf be reconciled to God. Somebody say we are ambassadors for Christ. Now, the aspect of Jesus being Lord, look at how an ambassador operates. Goes to a foreign country, when they go to that country, they are not subject to the laws of that country. Rather, they are subject to the laws of the country where they come from. Glory to God. We come from heaven. That's why we are born again, born from above. And then we are placed on the earth and when we are here the laws of this country are subject to the kingdom laws are we together and so jesus reign extends to everywhere where the ambassador goes we must have laws of the kingdom of god ruling wherever we go If an ambassador comes to this nation he will be given a plot maybe their nation will buy a house and buy a, a whatever put a flag and then it's registered that this is that foreign embassy embassy of let's say USA and let let me tell you when you get to that embassy uh, the laws there are different are we together you have entered into another world don't even want to think about visa US visa is another thing that thing has had so many protocols 
I mean, it's a trauma for many people. It's the kind of cries, mothers cry, trying to follow their husbands in America who have been stuck for a long time. Hey, you go to nations like, you know, I mean, counties, I mean, cities like Seattle, you find the many men whose wives are in Kenya. And they have been there for five years. They have no papers, they can't come back. And the women here cannot be given papers to go because of kingdom prob problems and protocols. So anyway, thank God for salvation. The kingdom of God is everywhere. There's no visa. As soon as you are born again, and as soon as you are saved, you are ready now to become Christ's ambassador, a citizen of heaven that is ready to represent Jesus wherever we go. Hallelujah. And so this aspect of being an ambassador is an important aspect that you need to carry with you even as you go. In the marketplace, we represent Christ everywhere. And I think I've given enough stories. So I want to conclude by saying the extent of Jesus' lordship is literally over everything. Somebody say it's over everything. Now, when Jesus was on the earth, he demonstrated his lordship even over nature and the physical things, you know, and things in nature. For instance, Mark chapter 4 and verse 41, they asked a question. Mark chapter 4, the gospel, Mark chapter 4, verse 41 because he had rebuked the wind, the Bible says, Mark, Gospel Mark. Second Kings, next time. Mark chapter 4, verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, Who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? That is the Lord. The wind obeys him. Ask your neighbor, has the wind ever obeyed you? So you can see, we have work to do, right? We have work to do. But this one guy here in Kenya, he came to my office up here one time and told me a story. I will not mention the town because time is over, but what happened is there's this dumping site in one of these towns. Now dump sites have a lot of smoke. So on this man's land, was next to the dump site. He kept writing to the municipal, please change this dump site because every afternoon the smoke and that stench is always in his house, his compound, until his wife developed a chest problem. Now, how many of you, Neymar, does not move that quickly unless you make noise? So it became a whole problem a whole year. And the man was a new believer. One day he was doing Bible study, reading scriptures, and he saw Jesus rebuking the wind. Then he got an idea. He said, maybe I can do Jesus' way. And because it's not Nairobi, his home did not have a, a wall. It was a normal vegetation. You know, the way you have the kayafa and whatever. So he woke up in the morning and he made a prayer. He pointed at the dump site. He's telling me the story here in the office. He said, wind and smoke, I command you, don't enter my compound. In the name of Jesus. That afternoon, it was drama. You should have seen the compound. The wall, smoke is on the other side, and in this one acre, there was no smoke. Yeah. And for the next one year, there was no smoke in his house. And then, kwa geti yake, arufu iko pandaire a dam site. Kwa kia arufu, akuna smoke. Here in Kenya, hapa kwa murima, hapa kwa murima. Na usiguza murima, although aliguza murima jana. Stand up on your feet. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So, kusumbuliwa na stench, na smoke, Jesus is Lord. I, I think you have an assignment now. You, you can speak to the wind. You, you can speak to, to the smoke. You can speak to the water. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I, I agree you are Lord. And in the name of Jesus, I will enter into this Lordship of Christ and speak to nature in the name of Jesus. Rakato Shiabadaya. Lakato Yazata. Put Mark chapter 1, verse 27 as we pray. Yes, even the wind, even the sea, even the, the nature can respond to Christ in the name of Jesus. Chapter 1 and verse 40, I mean 27. 27. Chapter 1, verse 27, as we make that prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. 
Listen to this one. Then they were all amazed that they questioned among themselves saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. That's Jesus who is the Lord. Unclean spirits, you can command them and they will obey you. Lift your hand as I pray for you. In the mighty name of Jesus, every unclean spirit, every familiar spirit, every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of uh, fear, every spirit of unbelief, every spirit of disease, every spirit of sickness, we command you, you have no power because Jesus Christ is Lord. That even wind, storms, waves, demons, unclean demons, sicknesses, diseases, all these forces, they bow at the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I now pray for the church and God's people and everybody under the sound of my voice from today. I commission you, go in the same kingdom power, go in the same authority. Go and declare the Lordship of Jesus. Go and rule in the midst of your enemies. Use your faith. Use your mouth. Declare the word. Speak the word. You will see the movement of the kingdom as an ambassador representing Christ on the earth. And right now, anybody at the sound of my voice and you are sick, I command that sickness. Go, be healed in the name of Jesus. I command trouble, disappear in the name of Jesus. I declare we will see miracles, signs and wonders because Jesus is Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Yeah, clap your hands and set up.